Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and I have a wet felting project to share with you today. Just showed you some of the wool that we're going to use. You also need a tennis ball and you can wrap this in plastic wrap to keep the tennis ball dry. And I learned this method from a previous kit that I used. I am linking that video and all that information in the description box below. All right, so today we're using merino top wool for this project. We are going to felt a model of the earth. Now this is not the only wool that's available there's actually quite a variety and each one has its own qualities depending on the project that you want to do and I have left more information down in the description box below now while most of the wool that we're using today is merino wool top there was some other wool kind of mixed in in our supplies so we're going to be wet felting a model of the earth and I am now working on the upper mantle and the crust and later we'll come back in and we will do the core and the mantle. So I have gone ahead and done some yellow and some brown and now I am working on the water and the land masses and that blue is absolutely beautiful. Now I went ahead and tied this in place but I do not recommend this. Once we're done you're going to see why it wasn't a good idea to tie it but I thought that I kind of just needed to keep it all together but once you start to wet felt it it does stay together. It does seem like it's shifting around but it's really not. So now I'm going to work on the land masses. I've got this beautiful green. I used a little bit of undyed wool for the polar caps and I had such a struggle trying to get these land masses on there. And by the time it's done, it's actually kind of funny because there's basically only two really large land masses. All right, so next we want to get a couple of bowls of water and some dish soap. We are using some really hot water in one and then some cold water in the other. And now this is going to really get foamy once you start working with it, but that's okay. That's normal. I would just recommend using a, an extra large bowl. We use like a medium sized bowl and the previous time we did this we used a large bowl and really you want to go with the largest bowl you have available. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this pretty much in real time for the beginning part because it's kind of a different craft if you've never done this before. It's really hard to know whether or not you are doing it correctly. So when you first dunk it in the water, you're going to find that immediately it kind of all comes together, which is good. And then you feel like everything is shifting around and you think, oh gosh, this is not going to stay together, but it does. And to help you along on that process, to help interlock all of those fibers together, you want to use some dish soap and you can put it directly onto your project as well as in your water. Now you can see my 11 year old son off to the left waiting to start this project. I also have my six year old daughter who is working with us as well. Now before we started this I went ahead and began their project by doing the first layer and then I showed them which felt they could use in order to create the different layers of the earth and they did a great job and you'll be able to see that in just a little bit. Now I would recommend getting two bowls for each person who is working on this or just get a really large tub to do this because it got messy fast so I went ahead and I got a towel to put down on my desk and after about 10 or 15 minutes you can see that it's really come together well but it still needs a lot more time to get nice and firm and this gets a little bit tedious for children and I'm going to show you something that happens actually because we don't complete this project the way it was intended. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep mushing this together, squeezing it, and going from hot water to cold water. You can see that it's gotten really sudsy at this point. All right, so here comes kind of a fun part. When it's kind of all together, you can start bouncing this around, and this will help interlock those fibers even better. And this is a lot of fun for the kids as well. You can do this in the bathtub or, oops, where did mine go? I bounced it right back into the water. All right, that's okay. I'm just going to work on it a little bit more in the water, and then you can just take it back out and work on it as well. So you want to wash your felt when you are done. We actually took a break thinking we'd come back later in the day to finish the process, but we didn't. And after several days, it dried and my kids were just kind of done. Mine was pretty well, but you could see my daughter's was still really spongy and my son's also was really squashy. 
it's completely dry all the way through. All right, so now it's time to kind of reveal the different layers of the earth, fill it, and of course, in order to do this, we need to cut around the top. So we decided to cut around our polar cap, and it was a little bit difficult to get in there and do it because we did quite a few layers, but check this out. This is super cool. Don't cut it all the way through if you want to keep the lid on so that it's easy to close, and you can really see like those different layers in there, and now we can just pop out the ball, which is kind of like the thrilling part of this project. And you can see that the little rope that I tied, you can kind of see that. And so it was kind of like a bad idea to do that. So, and my kids didn't do it for theirs. So I just trimmed that off and I did probably too much blue because that ocean is pretty deep right there. And then you can see some other layers in there. I got to show you what my children's looks like. Uh, again, the fun part was taking out the ball, which was kind of cool. You can see that theirs was a little bit kind of not as firm and this is my daughter's who felt it hers the least but it looks fine so even if you've got like different levels of ability even if you don't felt them all the way you can see that the project still turns out okay all right, so here comes kind of a fun part, I think. Uh, we're going to do the core and the mantle. So we're gonna go ahead and felt this again, or rather, we're going to continue felting for this project. Now you could do this at the same time that you felted the earth, but your hands kind of get tired and it gets a little bit tedious, and so we just did this a few days later. Uh, so we did some undyed wool for the very center part, and then we just covered it with some red, and we're going to add some dish soap to that as well. And again, we have our two bowls here, one with hot water and one with cold water. So to begin with, it feels like your ball is just completely squishy. There's no form to it, and it's really hard to imagine that it's going to actually become into a ball but it does. So we're gonna go ahead and dunk that in the water, we're gonna squish it, we're gonna roll it between our hands, and then we're gonna duck into the, the hot water, and then back and forth, we're gonna keep doing this. This part takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Now I went ahead and I got my sun started, which was the red one, and only in five minutes you can see that it really shapes well into a ball, even though it's still really squishy, so he's not done. Now I worked on my daughter's next, and hers is even still squishier than my son's because I worked on hers a little bit later. So as soon as I was done with my son's, he started working on it, then I did my daughter's, and lastly I did mine. And I wasn't really careful about measuring, so they're actually all different sizes with my son's being the smallest. And after about 10 to 15 minutes, you can see that it's still pretty squashy. So we're actually gonna work on this a little bit more before we rinse it, but we did do pretty good. And if you wanted to stop at this point, I think it would be fine. Uh, you just may not get the same quality as one that you felt until it's like really firm. And once we're done, we want to go ahead and rinse it. So I just got another clean bowl of water and I'm just going to rinse it and squeeze it a few times. And if it becomes a little bit misshapen, then I can go ahead and round it between my hands. So this is what they look like when they are nearly done. The last thing you want to do is set them outside to dry or in a dryer is fine too. And after several hours, they were dry enough for us to continue this project. So we each chose a different color in order to do our mantle. And I've got this beautiful red color here. And I'm just going to use probably a, a handful of it, but it's going to be very full. And I'm just separating it here. And we are going to wrap our core, which was the small heart ball around this softer mantle so this is for our geology and mineralogy unit for our homeschool and the core is the hard part of the earth under all that pressure it's just solid and then you have like your magma around it which would be your mantle so we've got like the wool that hasn't been felted and then of course we get to the crust which is hard we didn't really show all the details obviously this is an artistic representation of a model of the earth but it was very educational I highly recommend it if you get a chance to do this go ahead and try it we really like opening up our earth and then feeling for the core and then popping it out I don't know we're just kind of silly that way but we really like this and you can see that the land masses don't represent the actual land masses but that's okay at least you get the point that it is the planet and then here's where you can just kind of pop out the core and you can definitely feel that it is hard so I feel like this was a really great educational hands-on project to complement our main lesson block
So if you're interested in seeing some of the other projects and lessons we are doing with our mineralogy block, you can tap on the screen right now. And if you want to see what we are up to on a daily basis, don't forget that you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine.